In this video, I'm going to share some basic tips for brand new bloggers. Uh, so if you're thinking about starting a new blog or you just started one, um, these are going to be some good refresher tips to kind of help you get your mindset right and to have a plan of how to kind of tackle this whole blogging thing. So first off, who am I? Well, my name is Nick Foy, the founder of the Nick Foy TV uh, YouTube channel here. And uh, I started running some different blogs in college. Currently, I'm running four different blogs. I've got my golf blogs, a personal finance blog called Under 30 Wealth. And then I've also gotten into the fitness and marketing space as well. Uh, so these are exciting blogs that I've spent years and years of writing content for and growing. And I've been sharing these tips for you guys on my YouTube channel. And then I started taking on some clients. So recently, uh, I've got a wedding blog I'm working on. We've got a candles company and some different real estate professionals that I do work for as well. So in terms of getting started, you know, a few things that hold people back initially is you worry about being perfect. Uh, so my first tip, of course, is not to let perfectionism hold you back. Uh, when you first start your blog, you know, the design, the layout, the theme and everything, it's going to take some work uh, to get everything picture perfect. You can go around the internet and see all these beautiful websites out there that everybody's custom designed and they've taken you know probably several months even years to get to that point um, you know a lot of people go through different iterations they'll start with one design over time they'll realize they like different things they see from around the web when they're on other people's websites they'll pull inspiration and over time they'll kind of customize their own website and turn it into what you see today so the point is just get started. Your website eventually can look nice and clean and crisp and prof professional down the road. But first you want to just get started, get blogging. Uh, your content will improve over time as well. So if you've got the fear, you know, that you don't want to put out crappy content that, that people read, you know, don't worry too much. No one's really reading your blog at the beginning anyways. So the initial articles you first put out, um, you're going to learn a lot from about yourself, how you write. Um, whether or not you want to keep writing yourself or whether you want to hire writers for your blog to help you out. So you're going to be able to learn different habits along the way, um, kind of figuring things out as you go. And that's how you're going to improve is, you know, just by doing. All right, next up, you want to think about why do you even want to blog to begin with? So if you've been seeing, you know, income reports, if you've ever been on websites where bloggers share their income reports, a lot of times in the marketing space or maybe you've been on YouTube seeing different people talk about blogging or wherever you decided you got the inspiration to start a blog you have to ask yourself why do you really want to start a blog are you being misled you know by these successful bloggers that show how much money they're making and that's caused you to think that you want to start a blog to become rich um, you know or, or is it something that you truly think you're going to be passionate about because when you start a blog you are going to have to put out content and you're going to have to put out content on a consistent basis. So it's going to take a lot of work to get to that level where you're making good income from a blog. I mean, we're talking hundreds and hundreds of blog articles and then hours and hours promoting each of those blog articles on different websites, social medias, um, you know, to try to get traffic to those blog articles. So it takes a lot of time and energy. It's not something easy. So don't get misled by those successful you know, bloggers you see out there that make it look easy. It's taken them years and lots of hours to get to where they are. Now, if you're just wanting to start a blog for fun called hobby blogging, it's totally okay too. You can get started with a hobby blog. That's kind of how I started out and that's how a lot of people start out. I uh, first was learning about the whole internet, uh, making money online. So I just started hobby blogging about golf. And, uh, you know, over time as my website grew and more and more people came and read my content, that's when I really started working on creating my own products to sell and trying to make money off my blog. But initially, I didn't post that frequently. Uh, but now I post a lot more frequently now that I'm taking it serious like a business. All right, so moving on to some important tips when starting your blog. First off, you have to think what niche do you want to begin with. Uh, you can keep it narrow. The more narrow you get, you know, the less competition. If you think about fitness, fitness is such a broad category. But if you get real specific, like you go after, you know, workouts for pregnant women or yoga for, you know, athletes, or you get diving down into a deeper niche where it's for specific types of people and it's a specific segment, 
um, then that's going to help you find you know your own little niche to kind of carve out and there's going to be less competition and it's easier for you to stand out as the authoritative figure in that niche and you know kind of the go-to resource um, in order to build yourself out into the general niche and become popular in the general niche that's going to take a ton of hard work a lot of time and you know kind of some luck as well so that's why we recommend maybe starting with maybe a less competitive niche all right now you do want to keep it broad enough that you don't run out of topics to write about so again on a blog you're probably going to be pumping out at least a hundred pieces of content over the next couple of years sometimes if you want to start off at a fast start you should recommend starting a hundred blog articles in your first hundred days I know that sounds like a tedious task but you'll be blown away at how much quicker your blog starts taking off and becoming successful when you pump out a piece of content every day for the first hundred days and you do it consistently it's gonna help build habits for the long term and you're gonna get a ton of content on your blog right away so that's gonna give it a chance to you know get out there and promote it and get it found by people searching across the internet for your topics that you're covering in your niche so think about your topics you know what could you write about maybe you could break up 10 different topics to write 10 different blog articles on and that would get you to your 100 so if you could sit down and make a list of 100 blog ideas then I think that's probably a broad enough niche but it's still narrow enough that you can you know avoid being too competitive all right so going along the line of how to brainstorm a list of 100 blog post ideas so one thing you can do is just head over to Google. Google is a search engine. That is where people go type things in. Google turns out a bunch of results for them. So if you just type something into the Google search bar, you're going to notice a drop down menu where Google kind of offers some suggested searches based on the initial words you start typing in. So this is what we're calling the Google search prefill. So if you start to type in the word fitness, for example, Google might pop up a bunch of options that say fitness tips, fitness for beginners, fitness for women, and they'll start auto-filling some different ideas for you. And that can give you some inspiration of what kind of topics to cover in your niche. So you could just think about some different words to start typing in and see what kind of suggestions Google gives you. You can also hop on to Pinterest. Pinterest is a search engine where people get on and look through a bunch of different pins, which are just vertical images that people are posting to their profiles and it shows up in like a news feed and you can just scroll down the feed and look at all the different pins uh, so you can go in same thing use the search bar type in a couple of words like fitness tips and see all the different pins that come up and you can start reading the titles of those pins to kind of get inspiration for what kind of blog posts other fitness websites have talked about uh, as an example or whatever niche you get into if it's not fitness for example whatever niche you decide you know think of some words people would use in your niche type that in into Pinterest and you'll see some different ideas of titles and articles that you could write and you could jot down a list from there we also have the Quora which is a kind of like a community where people can ask questions and people can provide answers so you can go on there to gain inspiration see what kind of questions people are asking uh, and then if you want to do some research and come up with a good answer, you could write that as a blog article. So the title of the blog post could be whatever the question was. And then the entire blog article could be an in-depth guide or an in-depth answer giving them educational information that covers that question that people are going to be searching for. Then you can also hop on to other websites in your niche. So for example, if you were in the fitness space, you would of course want to go look at other fitness blogs and just scroll through their articles look at what kind of content they're creating um, if they have the social share buttons on their on their post you can see how many times it's been shared to see if it's been popular or not there's also a free tool you can use called buzz sumo i think you only get so many free searches per day though before you have to sign up for like a premium plan but you can go on there as well and type in article ideas on buzz sumo and it will pull up a list of results based on social media shares so you can get some ideas of what kind of content has been you know the most popular on social media that gets lots of Facebook Twitter Instagram Pinterest shares alright posting frequency so once you've got your niche chosen and you've kind of got your topics figured out and your blog post ideas you've got your hundred blog posts then you need to set up an, a, a schedule of how often you want to post and you want to be consistent with it that's going to help your readers uh, come back on a consistent basis when they start to see you know how often you're posting uh, by looking at the dates and stuff 
on your blog articles. And you can even specify somewhere on your website that you post, you know, three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or maybe you post daily. So that way people can come back and, you know, have an expectation of when you're going to have new content that they can read. So first, what you want to do is find out what you can handle in your schedule in order to maintain quality work. So again, I recommend trying right away when you first start a blog, you know, just get some initial content out there to get a feel for it. But if you want to step up to a challenge, you know, I would challenge you to start off your first 100 days, publish one blog article a day for 100 days. So in about three months from now, you're going to have 100 blog posts on your blog. And by then, you're going to have developed a lot of writing skills because that's 100 pieces of content you spent time writing. So your writing is going to be much more improved. You're going to have, you know, a lot of articles. So that's a lot of opportunities to promote on social media, your articles to try to get readers back to your website. And it's going to give you time, uh, of course, to have a ton of pieces of content that start getting indexed into Google so that Google can eventually start surfacing those articles to different searchers that are searching things related to whatever topic you covered in that article. So a few things to note, though, is burnout. Um, yeah, if you think that maybe writing one per day is not going to be sustainable because of your busy life, uh, if you've got work and you're just trying to blog on the side part time, you know, it might be kind of hard to come home every night and, and write an entire blog article where you have to do research and you've got to write the article and you've got to edit it and then you've got to get it scheduled or published and you might not have enough time to do that every single day. Or if you do it every single day, you might burn out too. It just depends on each individual, how driven you are, how motivated you are, um, you know, different factors going on in your life. Like, again, if you have a busy schedule, then it's harder to find the motivation to squeeze this in every day, knowing that it's going to take up the remainder of your free time. So just think about your own personal situation. You know, there is no proper way to do it. I'm just suggesting as a challenge that I've seen work trying to publish one per day. But if you can't maintain that frequency and keep up good quality work, then it's okay to do, you know, once a week or, you know, three times a week. I would at least recommend doing one post a week. Uh, that way you can get out four pieces of content per month on average. And that can, you know, be a good start. But as you can learn more and more how to, how to systemize things to save time, I think you'll be able to put out maybe two to three posts a week. And maybe you can get to the point where you're putting out one per day. All right, so content marketing, once you've written your posts and you figured out your frequency of how often you're going you're gonna to publish to your website, next you need to be promoting. So not only do you need to spend time creating content, but you should also be spending the same amount of time or more time promoting it. So that's one reason too, the argument you'll see people make of not posting once per day because when you post once per day, then all your time goes into content creation, content creation, content creation. And you don't ever have enough time to promote those pieces of content because you're whipping them out every day. So some people argue that maybe two to three times per week posting frequency is best because you could post one today and you could spend the next couple of days just promoting it on social media and on other websites and to other bloggers who you think would share your content by, you know, outreach via email or maybe you're contacting these bloggers through the DMs. So just promoting your content, um, giving yourself time to promote it. It is a busy task. It does take work and take time to promote. So you need to be you know, aware of that when you're creating content and you also need to be setting aside time to promote it. So again, there's different platforms, Pinterest, you know, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. There are tools you can use where you can schedule these posts out onto these different social media platforms. So again, if you are writing content ahead of time and scheduling it to be published to your blog, then you can grab those links and you can schedule those ahead on your social media schedulers. So there's Buffer or there's Hootsuite. Um, these are two different schedulers for social media that you can go in and you know upload posts ahead of time and set them for a week or two weeks from now or a month from now. So you can go in there and kind of get yourself ahead of schedule. That way any work you're doing each day is technically work that won't be out there on the internet for a couple weeks or a couple months. That way you're ahead of the game. If you happen to have a busy week where you get slammed with family, friends, work, whatever obligations you have, you know, you don't have to worry. You still have everything all scheduled to be auto published for you. So you're not skipping a beat and then you can catch up, you know, the following week and still be ahead. So those are a few tips I've got for you there as far as scheduling things and making your content marketing system effective. Um, but you also want to study SEO. So one of our final tips here, 
you know, study SEO, improve your blogs over time for search engines. So right away, you should write good quality content and, you know, put it out there on social media. But the end goal is to get it ranking in Google eventually. So because that's, you know, every day there's millions of people online searching things on Google. And if if you can dominate your niche and become one of the authoritative blogs that ranks in Google on the first page for different topics in your niche, then that's going to be a bulk of your traffic. So you don't have to spend as much time always promoting so much on social media. Instead, you have kind of this passive traffic coming from social media. It kind of just comes on autopilot. But in order to get that, you need to practice SEO, which is search engine optimization. That means, you know, customizing your articles to be built for the search engines. So there's some different things we'll go over in some upcoming videos, or you can check my channel on my YouTube channel to see if we've already covered SEO. Uh, but basically it's, you know, optimizing your titles, your headings, optimizing your images, um, using different keywords throughout your paragraphs. That way when Google scans your blog post, it can quickly tell what your article is about and it can serve your article to the most relevant people. All right, lastly, let's talk a little bit about my own personal case. So for those of you that wonder what I did, again, when I first started my golf blog, you know, I wanted to get initial content going. So I started off publishing two to three times a week. And then I kind of trimmed that down after a little while and started just posting once a week. And I kept this once a week rate for a long time. I even had some periods where I stopped publishing at all. I kind of just took a break from my blog. Uh, and those were kind of in the early years, the early stages. Uh, but as it started making money eventually in 2016, when I started seeing some real income coming in, I hit my first thousand dollar month. That's when I started getting real inspired to create more content. And it really wasn't until 2018 uh, when I started learning the importance of, you know, utilizing the once a day strategy. So 2018 is when I first started publishing once a day, because uh, by then my website had been a couple years old. I started getting blog posts ranking in the first page of Google. So I started realizing that Google now sees my website as more powerful. It's more authoritative. So anytime I come out with new content, I have a much easier time watching it get up the ranking quite quickly where before, you know, I might publish something in the initial stage uh, back in year one, year two of my blog. And it might take six to 12 months before that post ever made its way up the rankings to the first page. So now that my website's more established, it's more powerful. You know, I have a lot of backlinks pointing at me, a lot of websites linking to me. That's helped give me more authority in the eyes of Google. And then just having good content out there on a consistent basis that Google's ranked for me. Uh, you know, people clicking through these different blog posts when they rank on the first page, that helps tell Google that my content must be quality. So when I come out with future content, I already kind of have that edge. So it's helped me, you know, be able to rank those posts a lot faster. And so I realized that all that I really needed to do then to increase my traffic was just increase the content I'm putting out. So I started publishing one per day. And all of a sudden I saw, you know, within the first 90 days of doing this, publishing 90 straight days in a row, all of a sudden my Google traffic had doubled from what it was 90 days ago before I started the strategy. So that really opened up my eyes that I needed to keep going. So again, I've already done this 100 posts in a 100 day challenge that I'm challenging you to do. I've seen the results and how it works. So that's where I'm challenging you to try to publish one piece of content every day for 100 days and you'll be amazed at the progress you can make. And uh, right now I think I'm working towards 150. Uh, it's almost five months in a row now of publishing once a day. So I'm going to try to keep this streak going. And again, I'll do a, a case review study at the end of the year when we hit 365 posts in a row to show you guys how much my Google traffic surged by putting out so much content. All right, so that's it for today's lesson. I hope you guys got value out of these tips for beginners. We covered the basics of getting started, not letting fear hold you back, not letting perfection hold you back. And then we went into the blog niche, uh, you know, tips on how to pick your niche, um, you know, picking out how to figure out what to write about, coming up with ideas, and then figuring out your posting frequency to your blog. How often should you schedule blog posts? And then once your posts are published, you want to go market them on other platforms outside of your website to get readers back to your website so that you can get some traffic going. And that's how you're going to be able to, you know, not only have readers, but you're going to be able to start making some money if you want to turn your blog into a business. So for more on that, you can check out one of my courses called Profitable Blogger. I'll link to it below. It's if you go to asknickfoy.com courses, you can find my list of courses or you can go to my teachable page, ask 
nickfoy.teachable.com and you'll be able to sign up for Profitable Blogger. It's my course that teaches you how to turn your blog into a business. We'll go over different marketing strategies. We'll go over different products you can sell, different types of income you can make from a blog, what the best type of income is from a blog, and lots more. So be sure to check that out. And I thank you guys so much for being here, giving me your time, your attention today. And I'll see you guys in the next video tutorial.